Ron DiCiani is a renowned artist whose paintings have appeared at the Moscow Olympics and have hung in galleries, offices, and museums around the world. He's been hired by the biggest names in publishing and advertising, including best-selling author Frank Peretti and Max Lucado. But he's probably best known for his painting, Spiritual Warfare, which has sold tens of millions of prints globally. Then, Ron DiCiani was commissioned to paint the largest mural of the resurrection, 12 feet high by 40 feet wide, which took him two years to complete. The mural is now framed and hangs in the Museum of Biblical Art in Dallas, Texas. The resurrection mural has been named one of the top 100 pieces of fine art in the world. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the single act in history that separates Christianity from every other religion, every other philosophy, and every other belief system. When I was commissioned to do that, my first thing was to immediately go to scripture, to try to understand this deep significance of the resurrection. And God gave me this incredible idea of having Christ emerge from the tomb, which I've never seen done before. I wanted to stop a moment in time when he grabbed the sides of the tomb and walked out. If you look at Christ, on his belt are the keys of death and hell. Christ is the central theme of the painting. However, we have a cast of characters. The first on either side of Christ are Moses and Elijah. They are the same ones that met Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration. Behind Moses is David, a man after God's own heart. He is one of the three people in the painting that are royalty, that know to kneel before the King of Kings. Isaiah promised us the counselor, the mighty God, the Prince of Peace. He gets to see him with his very own eyes. Behind Isaiah is Abraham, the father of nations, gets to see the one who brings all of those to heaven. On the other side of Christ, Elijah, who was transported to heaven without dying, Noah now knows all that he went through for 120 years was worth it. Between Noah and Elijah, you'll see up above a dove flying past the rocks, the symbol of the Holy Spirit who literally raised him from the dead. Queen Esther, who was willing to perish, now sees the one who was willing to give up his life. Behind Esther is John the Baptist, who at one point in his life wondered, is he really the one now he gets to watch him walk out of the tomb. So he knows he's the one. In back of him, again kneeling, is Daniel. Royalty again, Daniel was a governor. If you look at the far right corner of the painting, you'll see Mount Calvary, also known as the place of the skull or Golgotha. That's where Jesus was crucified. And above the three crosses in the distance, you'll see a rainbow, Christ, the angels and the guards are all totally physically represented at that moment. However, the cloud of witnesses on either side are all transparent at some point because they're in another dimension. Looking back at Christ, you'll see that there are special cracks right around his head, symbolically forming the crown of thorns he wore. And I wanted to sum it all up by his gaze upward of looking to the Father and saying, I did it. Because of this moment, pictured in the resurrection mural of Christ conquering the grave, we now become heirs and joint heirs with him, with the ability of accepting him as the Lord and Savior who rose from the dead to have eternal life.